very good evening for one and all present here i'm like uh, it just uh, it is it is just gone like a flash of a light we just started uh, this uh, online certification program just about uh, uh, eight nine days before and it has just come to a, a very uh, warm uh, ending uh, it has been such a, um, a great experience for us as well because it has been equally a learning experience for us to do an online certification program which we haven't done uh, before. But we've tried our level best to uh, keep up the merit. We've tried level best to do justice to all your all the participants and the time they have spent with us. And uh, we've already we've had extraordinary experience. We had. Uh, uh, eminent personalities coming on board, sharing their experience with us, motivating us and giving us the importance of politics and how important it is youngsters to be in, into politics. Uh, in that front, I should surely thank uh, uh, T.S. Krishnamurti, sir, who has, who has always been our uh, you know, source of inspiration and guidance. And uh, sir, being our patron for Sansa Ratna Awards Committee, he had extended the, to be the chairman for Board of Studies uh, for this online certification program. So as much as uh, what we have promised you in the beginning of uh, you know, delivering the merit uh, in the in the in the purest way possible. We've we've tried our level best to uh, you know uh, be neutral and uh, deliver um, you know our um, our deliverables uh, in in the right way. Uh, so to begin with, and I'm I'm, um, I'm so glad you all had uh, made up time to come here for this validatory function uh, for uh, this online certification program. And uh, this validatory function will have the validatory address by our former uh, Chief Election Commissioner of India, Sir T.S. Krishnamurti. So can I request uh, Prime Point Srinivasan sir, to deliver his welcome address? Uh, good evening to all. Am I audible, uh, Priya? Am I audible? Yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Uh, good evening uh, to everyone. And good evening, uh, Mr. T.S. Krishnamurti. Uh, mm -hmm. It was... Uh, the eight days of our sessions uh, went off so nicely and uh, we did not know how the time fly off, flied off and with a lot of eminent people uh, taking sessions and uh, sharing their views and uh, Priya will be uh, sharing the small gist of the uh, program and uh, really we are grateful to Mr. TSK who has given us all the encouragement we don't have in India, we don't have any program for political aspirants. We have a program for everybody. We have a program for IAS aspirants. We have a program engineering aspirants. We have a program for banking aspirants. You name anything and uh, skill development, even if you want to become a plumber, if you want to become a mason, everything is trained. But the country is the topmost job of a politician. Everybody, work, uh, because we, have, uh, we don't care for that. So we thought that we will take it up and uh, good Samaritans or uh, good people like uh, Mr. TSK and others also joined this uh, movement. It is a really a movement and around uh, 22 or 23 participants have joined across the nation. A lot of people from other uh, parts of the country also have joined. They are here and really it was a great uh, uh, first uh, being a COVID situation. Uh, we also did not know how to do that. This is the first experience for us to use the technology for online courses and uh, so much of technical challenges, this, that, and uh, everything we are able to manage, learn a new thing. And really we are uh, grateful to all the uh, uh, participants also, all those who have uh, uh, joined, uh, who have helped us in the process. About Mr. T.S. Krishnamurti. He, uh, he was the chief election commissioner in 2004 general elections and he is the person who was uh, uh, who uh, at a single stroke up and introduced 543 constituencies EVM machines, the one single stroke and he also introduced a nota, the coin, the word nota also uh, was coined by him through Supreme Court order and he has made a lot of reforms during his uh, tenure and he the first recommendation also he submitted to the then Prime Minister, Dr. Manmohan Singh for electoral reforms. Yesterday also there was a mention in one of the our uh, interaction sessions also. I think Honorable MP, Mr. Premachandran or somebody made a reference about electoral reforms. So these are all the things he has initiated the ball rolling and still the electoral reforms have not uh, taken place. But it's still in the political arena only. So uh, it is a great honor for us. A legendary person like Mr. T.S. Krishnamurti is with us. He is going to share his views. One piece of advice to all young uh, political aspirants. 
in uh, any time when you are going to be of a success in your uh, goal or uh, when you are uh, whether it is a politics or whether you are business or your education you have to work hard nothing comes uh, by sitting alone or sitting in a air conditioned atmosphere we don't get it you look at the leaders who have all been successful they have all toiled they have struggled even some many times i used to quote the torture test given by the automobile companies to the cars the cars that you are all traveling before it comes out to the showroom it would have undergone a severe torture the quality control department will take the car and put it in a different type of a torture the car the car unless it undergoes the car will not be in the market if there is a small problem the car will be sent back to the workshop again for repair even in tiruvalluvar in 2000 years ago he said uh, um, uh, he said that even the gold well unless uh, you know when the more and more you heat up the gold the gold gets glittering the glittering doesn't come without the heating in the same way if you are going to achieve a goal unless you suffer unless you put your hardship unless you have a pain your goal cannot be reached sudachudarum punbolum olirum tunbam sudachudan orkirbavark that means the gold the more and more you heat the gold gets uh, glittering the same way the uh, goal that you want to reach you have to undergo the suffering that is what the tiruvalluvar says so with that i welcome you all for this great evening and we are really happy with the uh, uh, after the eight days of uh, our uh, session we are uh, grateful to mr tsk for all his guidances we are welcoming him and all our guests and all our participants for the valedictory function and uh, i request uh, priya to take over and brief the sessions thank you very much welcome you all thank you sir thank you so much for your uh, uh, for welcoming our uh, chief guest and the other participants um, so now i'm here to give you a report about the certificate course uh, and uh, uh, a complete um, uh, you know super eye vision about how the course have actually been conducted so we inaugurated this uh, online certification program on the 17th of may by the honorable uh, minister of state parliamentary affairs sri arjun ram megwal ji in the presence of sri ts krishnamurthy former chief election commissioner of india and mrs rehana amir common councillor city of london corporation the session began from the 18th of may 2020 up till 27th may 2020 that is today we gave the participants an exposure in the field of communication public speaking decision making problem solving and much more special emphasis was given to the structure of indian constitution judiciary bureaucracy local governments constitutional bodies like election commission cagi finance commission etc were also dealt with facilitators with hands on experience held the sessions which include professor sridhar from madras christian college advocate on record mr purvish malkan supreme court prime point srinivasan communication expert previous year who had been supported in participants were uh, interact uh, participants were allowed to interact with our special guests like mla ptr tyagarajan and uh, professor g ramesh from iim bangalore tv journalist priyamvada renowned mps like shri batru hari matab and nk premachandran who have proven records of their excellence as politicians the special guests explained encouraged and, ad and advised youngsters to join politics the participants for this certificate program was scanned as the best of the applications we received for uh for about uh, 65 in numbers we have participants from punjab rajasthan up bihar delhi telangana and tamil nadu their involvement and commitment to this program has been phenomenal which resulted in extending our 18 hour session to a 22 hour session and there was a format which we followed in assessing these participants there were a three level of assessment which was uh, done um, to uh, to gauge their performance so the first level was we had given them a topic in which they had prepared the second level is we gave them an impromptu topic in which they had to speak and we gave them a, a time of about a minute or a minute and a half in which they have to in, um, instantaneously give us an extempore on the said topic and the third one is a debate which we had conducted we have given them the uh, debate topic a couple of days before they could go back and then um, uh, you know they 
rehearsed, they did a research on that, and then they came on the debate on the debate floor. So the debate and the extempo was conducted today, just before, just uh, from three to five p.m. And uh, in consequence, they have they are here at the valedictory valedictory function. And um, uh, not to forget uh, to thank uh, Prime Point Srinivasan sir, who has been so pivotal in this entire exercise to happen. Uh, there are a lot of people who encourage youngsters to join politics, but for somebody to take up the ownership of ensuring that youngsters take up politics and youngsters are motivated in the right perspective to take up leadership are a very hand to hand. All of us are really feeling very proud that uh, we could be directly be guided and be uh, you know uh, be raised by Frank Kohn Srinivasan sir with uh, all uh, guidance and reference to our uh, TSK sir as well. Um, so there are few participants who wanted to share their experiences in front of uh, our board of studies and the chairman of board. So, uh, to begin with uh, uh, Nandini can you can you share your experience about this? Yeah. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the opportunity to speak. Uh, so my name is Nandini and I'm from Chennai. And uh, for me, this, uh, this entire experience is, this, this entire experience has been very unique. I'm sorry, there's some disturbance. This entire experience has been very unique. Uh, my key to my key takeaways has been in learning about communication skills, uh, problem solving, decision making, public speaking. Uh, I really had a great time interacting with the participants. You know, we got the opportunity to meet the ministers face to face. It was a tremendous opportunity. I also learned a lot about how the judiciary works, how the state machinery works, and what's the connect between the state and the center, and what are the challenges that you know politicians face in their day to day life. So, thank you very much to NGPL uh, for this uh, excellent curriculum, and I really uh, enjoyed uh, my journey. Thank, thank you, you Nandini. So. Thank you so much, uh, Sriman Ramachandran. Please introduce yourself and uh, share your uh, feedback. Namaste. I am Sriman, Sriman Ramachandra Raja from Rajapalayam, which is famous for its own breed of dogs from Tamil Nadu. I would like to thank NGPL for such a wonderful session during this lockdown, which could enhance my political career. And I learned a lot from this uh, certification program. I learned about the judiciary, structure of judiciary, parliamentary proceedings, public speaking, decision making, which was the best among everything. And from the experts themselves, like Patru Hari Mahatab sir and N.K. Premachandran sir and uh, Purvish sir, who are an expert in, in their own field. And I learned, I've gained a lot of knowledge during the session from the experts. And uh, my public speaking skills, everything has developed due to the uh, sessions conducted by the NGPL certification course. And I would like to thank Prime Point Srinivasan sir, Priyadrashni ma'am for arranging such a wonderful session during this lockdown to spend our time productively enhancing our careers. Thank you so much. Thank you, Srinivasan. Uh, Ishita, can we hear uh, your feedback if you could just uh, introduce yourself? Thank you, ma'am. Good evening, Honorable Chief Guest and other respected guests and my fellow attendees. I'm Ishita from Lucknow. Policy regular Ashton Sir, founder of NGPL, and congratulate the entire team for the success of the certificate program on polity governance and politics. This pioneer initiative stands unique in the much needed arena of mentorship by sharing knowledge and experience by the learned experts for the aspiring future leaders. Each and every single session gave a very insightful and wholesome introduction to the topics taken by the respective speakers. The course stands to be an excellent collaboration of academicians, practitioners, as well as the professionals. Citing Padma Bhushan, Mr. Amritin Jatreya, a pioneer management consultant and educationist, who refers about Gyandan in Bhagavad Gita, that the biggest charity anyone can do to the humankind is the sharing of knowledge. In this context, I personally feel this certificate program sets as an example in that direction. I once again express my gratitude to NGPL program coordinator and wish this initiative a far more success in future. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Ishita. Thank you so much. That's very nice of you. And uh, can we hear from Ravindra Pal? Yeah. Ravindra Pal, please introduce yourself and then you can share. Yeah. Hello, sir. Myself, Ravindra Kumar from Delhi. Uh, I found this is a unique course 
मैंने कभी इस तरह का कोर्स पहले कभी नहीं देखा क्योंकि बहुत सारे कोर्सेज मैंने अटेंड किए हैं लेकिन पॉलिटिक्स गवर्नेंस एंड पॉलिटिक्स इस तरह का कोर्स मैंने कभी नहीं देखा था और थियोरिटिकल एंड प्रैक्टिकल नॉलेज इज वेल इनकॉर्पोरेटेड एंड आई हैव हर्ड मेनी डिग्नेटरीज व्हिच गेन मी अ लॉट ऑफ नॉलेज एंड एक्सपीरियंसेस एक चीज और मैंने देखी कि मेरे को यहां पर लगा नहीं कि मैं विजुअली इंपेयर्ड हूं यहां पर मेरे को ऐसा इंक्लूसिव एंड कंड्यूसिव एनवायरमेंट मिला जिसके थ्रू मैं यहाँ पर काफी कुछ सीख पाया कम्युनिकेशन से लेकर प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग तक जो भी एस्पेक्ट uh, हैं सर्टिफिकेट कोर्स के वो मैं सब कुछ सीख पाया और मैं उम्मीद करता हूँ इन द फ्यूचर कि इस तरह के कोर्सेज आगे भी होंगे थैंक यू सो मच थैंक यू रविंद्र थैंक यू सो मच एंड फाइनली वी आर है नमस्कार I'm Ambar Agarwal from Hyderabad, Telangana. I'm a final year law student. At the outset, I would like to thank NGPL for introducing an informative and beautifully designed certification course. I would uh, also like to extend my gratitude to Srinivasan sir and Priya Darshini ma'am for giving us all a platform to interact and seek guidance of illustrious politicians and academicians. Every session for me was a learning experience in itself and i'm confident that it will help me in my future political endeavors revolutionary freedom fighter shri veer savarkar ji once said while it is nice to describe a beautiful rose in full bloom it would be incomplete without a description of everything right from its roots stems manures and nutrients similarly this course will play the vital role of roots of the rose that we all will one day soon become thank you namaskar thank you so much amber that is very kind of you and um, so now that we have heard um, uh, hands on feedback from few of our participants who have attended this online I beg my pardon. I request um, T S Krishna Murthy, sir, former Chief Election Commissioner, to share his validatory address. Uh, first of all, I am delighted to participate in this validatory function of a unique uh, certificate course designed by the uh, Prime Point Senior Sir and uh, Priya. Uh, wonderfully done. I am delighted to hear the comments from the participants. Uh, I would like to. inform the participants that being the first course of its first kind i am thoroughly impressed by the impact it has created i would also like to tell the other invitees who have joined this uh, validity function we must compliment uh, the mr kinwasan and his team for taking this remarkable initiative for providing a platform for young politicians to learn the uh, ground work of politics and ground work of democracy democracy is a very attractive intellectually stimulating concept and many countries particularly after uh, the colonial rule they seem to have taken it as a matter of fashion thinking that this will provide all solution to the problems of each country in particular asian and african countries many of them were independent from the colonial rule They took it as a small, almost as a gospel that democracy will usher in all progress, will bring in maturity among the politicians and so on. But unfortunately, democracy is a very double-edged sword, like fire. It can be very effective, it can be very useful, it can be very productive, provided it has the right people. All the stakeholders should have to take a lot of interest in the functioning of democracy. If democracy doesn't function properly, you have to be reasonably certain that it will provide a direct imitation dictatorship or autocracy so many autocrats have come through the democratic route as you know so you have to be very conscious of the fact the quality of democracy is a very very important factor for its continuance for its survival and so on one of the things i have always been pressing in all my lectures that the democracy the democracy has to survive people have to have faith in the rule of law the western democracies at least men some of them who have been doing well i won't say not now any democracy is perfect every democracy has its own uh, deficiencies but many of the 
old Western democracy have developed over a period of time a certain respect for rule of law. This is the most important requirement in any democracy that survives. The rule of law is something which provides the equality before law, the rest of the institution of the Western democratic institution. The parliament frames laws, or the state legislatures frame the laws in that jurisdiction, and the judiciary plays a monitoring role, whether it is in accordance with the constitution or not. But then, today, today particularly in, in India, you find so many public interest litigations flattered in the Supreme Court, questioning the action of the government. I'm not going into the question whether it is right or wrong. All that I'm saying is that uh, laws have to be respected. Uh, the hatred and violence that is taking place in our democracy today is very disconcerting, it's very disturbing. I'm worried if democracy can survive in such an atmosphere. Though I'm optimistic at the same time that with a lot of youngsters being a very young democratic country that we are, there is optimism as well. But it is necessary that these optimistic features have to be channelized, they have to be fine-tuned, and they have to ensure that the deficiencies persisting now need to be corrected. The correction has to come partly from the people, the correction has to come partly from the political parties, from the legislative representatives who are elected, and ultimately the other democratic institutions like election commission, controller and auditor general of India, and uh, the Supreme Court and so on. So my appeal to all these youngsters who have taken part in this program, please bear in mind integrity, discipline, rule of law, they're all absolutely essential if democracy has to survive in this country. It is not that democracy was not there in this country. There are instances where even some of our kings were more democratic than some of our modern democratic leaders. I don't want to go into the various merits and demerits of that, but there have been things in this country that have been more democratic than the present day politicians. So you have to realize that there is a need for improvement in the quality of the politicians, there is a need for a separate law for political parties, because at the moment in this country there is no law for political parties, whereas in many countries there is a separate law. Uh, constituting the formation of political parties, the functioning of the political parties, the financial accountability, the quality of manifestos to be prepared, and ultimately uh, the, the number of the people to be elected to be put up for the electoral uh, contest. So there is an absolute need for a separate law for uh, having uh, for regulating the political parties. If we can have a separate law for companies, how they are formed and so on, or for partnership. I see no reason why we should not have a comprehensive law. The comprehensive draft law was prepared by by um, uh, Association for Democratic Reform. We have even suggested some changes in those drafts, but unfortunately, no initiatives seem to have come from our political parties. Even at the time of the election, they seem to be more concerned in pointing out the failures of other parties rather than pointing out the new direction they will take in conducting the quality of democracy in this country. So it is necessary that young people like you should take an active interest in the, the quality of our um, uh, you know, uh, democratic uh, functioning. The election, for example, uh, during the time of the election, you find so much of hatred and violence. The code of conduct which was introduced very wisely and approved by the Supreme Court it is not a law. But then it has become almost a piece of paper in some of these states. I don't know why people cannot democratically talk about their view viewpoint, their suggestions, their measures that they would like to bring, rather than pointing fingers at the, the personal life of the people or uh, the, some of the questionable activities of a particular person. What I would like to tell you is you must about, raise about all these petty prejudices. You, all politicians entering the new field, if they can set a new example in the quality of representation, in the quality of talking to the people, in the quality of functioning the democratic institution. I would like to quote Edmund Burke when he said, 
uh, address the voters in Bristol, you know, he said, whenever, or when you elect a particular representative, please bear in mind that such representatives, when there is a conflict between national interest, they should normally represent the local interest. But if there is a conflict between national interest and local interest, the representatives should be such who should vote for national interest and not for local interest. It's a very important mantra that is to be followed by the representative. Because I have attended a number of parliament sitting, I have attended a number of committees of parliament, many of them function well, but there are uh, very disturbing elements which take place. And unfortunately, uh, there seems to be no corrective action taking place. Electoral reform is a very important area if you want to uh, improve the quality of democracy. Election is the first step in the functioning of a democracy. The uh, suggestions made with election commission, the suggestion made by the Justice Venkatacharya Commission, which had been set up to review the constitution of our country, fortunately, they have all not been given the importance that they deserve. It is most of the reforms that have taken place in this country mainly because of the judiciary, because of the Supreme Court. It should not be so. I think political parties should show more initiative, more interest, more uh, dynamism in improving the quality. You know, uh, today one party will be in power, tomorrow another party will be in power. But they should remember that the institutional structure of democracy in the country needs to be saved, needs to be nurtured. It is very, very important that uh, you, when you enter the political activities, you have to show new dynamism in these matters so that the country will be proud of the quality of democracy in the country. There are many people who say the democracy will be dead very soon. There are many who say that democracy is dead in some other country. There is a book by John, Professor John Kay, yeah, is democracy dead. So, and so we have to bear in mind that there is a need for tremendous improvement in the quality of all the stakeholders, the voters, the political parties, the executive, the judiciary, all should bear in mind the most important fact, namely the welfare of the people. So I'm very happy that uh, the first initiative has been successful and the panelists, uh, I mean, the speakers have brought out the important features of a good I mean, quality democracy. But what is more important is we want more good people to enter politics. We want young people to enter politics. We want young people with integrity. Because here again, in most of our uh, legislatures, both in parliament and state legislatures, we find a lot of corrupt and criminal elements get elected. Because the system permits it. We have made some suggestions to bring about changes, but they have not been given. Most of the political parties have given the excuse that there is no consensus. You don't need consensus if you want to bring about innovation in your political life. What you need is majority in the parliament. And at least many of the reforms can be just by amendment to the representation of the act. So I do hope that the political party will realize the seriousness of the issue involved because the alternative is, please bear in mind, if we fail in democracy, not only we fail as a nation, not only we fail, our well, culture fails, uh, but what is more important is that the people of the world, they are looking upon, particularly those in Asia and Africa, they are looking upon India as a role model. So we have to demonstrate that democracy can work. Democracy has a suicidal tendency, but it can work if we can ensure that at appropriate stage, every reform is introduced, implemented, and integrity and rule of law are given the maximum importance by people in power. Uh, bureaucrats also play a role in the quality of democracy. Uh, I have been a bureaucrat for more than 33 decades. I can tell you, government is the only place bureaucrats can function independently. I have worked in private sector, I have worked in uh, an autonomous sector and so on. But I can tell you, I have head, kept my head high. I could assert my authority. I could differ from my ministers until I survived in the system. Because only in government, independence can survive. Uh, integrity can survive if you, the minister knows that you mean business. The minister knows that you will stand by the rule of law, he will jolly well bend his back to accept you. So please bear in mind that there is tremendous opportunity in this country 
for the youngsters, not only in politics, but also in governance. So we do hope that this uh, training of this type will multiply in course of time and that we will have a good crop of good politicians to bring about remarkable changes in the quality of democracy. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity and I wish you all the best. And I have no doubt that with uh, every uh, new course that will be, uh, that will be uh, brought about, I am sure more changes will be brought about so that uh, the participant will enjoy and the participant will realize that such courses are absolutely essential. The election commission also conducts a training courses, but mainly for uh, those in go involved in electoral duty, both in India and abroad. But what is more important is we have to train the common man, we have to train the young aspirants of politicians who need to know the nuances of running administration, the nuances of parliamentary procedure. So may I say, thank you Mr. Pa Mr. Srinivasan and your team for a wonderful work and wonderful initiative taken. Please don't stop with only one course. You have to carry on with many more courses. You may have to spread your net far and wide. I'm glad that there are many representatives from various parts of India. But I would like to see more and more of this. And I would like to see that we have a good crop of next generation of young politicians. My best wishes and great to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir. We're really very humbled uh, to, uh, to hear uh, such a uh, such a cherishable uh, and uh, such a knowledge-filled uh, words shared by you, sir. In fact, the uh, institution of democracy that's, that you have actually enlightened us as how important and how pivotal is it uh, for, uh, for us to understand that uh, the entire Asian countries and African countries are looking up to India as one of uh, examples of democracy and we, we cannot uh, afford to you know, uh, fail in front of their eyes is something uh, which uh, raises goosebumps over us. So thank you so much for those enlightening words of yours and we will surely take back your rule of law, your optimism to, uh, uh, you know, and your, uh, your, your point on integrity, your point on a welfare uh, perspective of people. In fact, sir, as, as a matter of fact, as a participant myself, I am overwhelmed to see that uh, the entire perspective of pol politics itself has changed in just this one session because we have a feeling that when it comes to politics it's about old people it's about uh, a marginally corrupt people it's about people with a little of a skewed image but uh, actually getting to talk to uh, dignitaries like you actually uh, you know being in a conversation with uh, mps like prema chandran sir batri matap sir we get to know humanity is the most important factor for anybody to get into politics in fact this is the biggest insight which we are actually taking back uh, from this online course and in fact as an organizer I'm taking it back I'm sure all my participants uh, will, will agree to me in this front and it has really been very enlight enlightening to hear uh, your speech sir.